So first quotes, and what you would ask yourself here is, what does that mean in the context of your writing, whenever you have a quote? And when I was asked this question initially as a graduate student, it forced me to remember to elaborate on quoted material or introduce it clearly in the context of my points and assertions. And this prevents me from quoting as much, and I instead opt for paraphrases and summaries cited, of course, and to integrate uh, that with my ideas more now is a habit of mine for writing scholarly. Uh, it definitely helps me to be more comfortable and familiar and confident with what I'm writing about, of course, before typing or writing a single word. Uh, yet, even with new knowledge, using this question as a guide helps you to always think through why you pulled the quote into your writing or work and how it enhances the content and context of your writing. So always ask yourself whenever you quote material, what does that mean in the context of my writing? And elaborate on that in your writing. Okay, the next point is supporting assertions. And whenever you're writing, anytime you proof your work, if you make an assertion, anywhere that you could ask says who, stop and think about that for a minute. When I was asked this as a graduate learner, my first response was, well, me, of course, that's who says it. And to which my professor replied, no one cares what you think, believe, or feel yet. You haven't established yourself as an authority in the field, an expert. And I understood that, but it made me think this was a little bit ridiculous at first. As I became more deeply and widely read in my field of study, I realized there are many voices. And some are more well regarded for good reason than others. And I'd be wise to join that scholarly conversation by giving attribution to those who support or, as the case may be, refute what I have to say. It shows more critical thinking when you can actually show opposing points of view, in fact. And so always link literature into your thoughts, beliefs, and feelings. I also realize that anyone, and I mean anyone, can have an opinion, thought, belief, or feeling, which are the basis of opinions. But it's the educated mind that can support and integrate those into the wider scholarly conversation of the field. Therefore, this advice is simply about substantiating your claims or supporting assertions. It isn't that having thoughts, beliefs, or feelings are banned as a graduate student or even as a, a, a well-regarded expert in the field. But in the context of academic writing, which you do as a graduate student, those do not matter. What matters is how our ideas, our knowledge, findings, assertions, how those link to existing knowledge in the field. And so we can expand the existing conversation and knowledge and scholarship. Next is synthesis and attribution. So what you'll ask yourself as you're writing is, does anyone agree or disagree with me who's already published in the field? And this is much like supporting assertions, but a bit different because it requires a higher level of evaluation. It goes beyond evaluation, in fact, into synthesis and creation. It's about original thought. So your professors want to see that you can synthesize and analyze and otherwise integrate the thinking and research of others in your field and topic effectively. Thus, attribution, um, attribution of sources is to support your assertions, and this is key. And synthesizing multiple perspectives is ideal. And again, this relates a little bit to the prior point. For example, saying, I believe authentic learning experiences are preferred for lasting retention it's not as powerful as what you might say in academic writing as Dewey, Gardner, Knowles, Mesro, and many other theorists have shown, and I agree, that authentic learning experiences are preferred for lasting retention. See the difference there? Ideally, each of those authors mentioned in that statement would also be cited with specific publications where they stated these points, and that's an even higher level of attribution, somewhat at the doctorate level. So in such a writing, you might go on to note the particulars of each person's belief and then restate your own very clearly. However, to start at least, work on some level of attribution for supporting your assertions with existing literature. That's it. Three quick tips for scholarly writing. I hope you found these useful. I'm Professor Johnson, and it's been a pleasure working with you. Mm -hmm.